perfect. Uh, so welcome again. Thank you for joining. Um, so today we will be talking about um, about EBSCO resources, electronic, uh, not EBSCO, sorry, about electronic resources that your library, uh, your library and your institution has access to. Um, EBSCO and not EBSCO, we will be talking about EBSCO Discovery Service. Actually, I will, in the last, la in following slides, I will explain you what EBSCO Discovery Service is and how you can search in it. So first I have like a short PowerPoint presentation to uh, give you some overview, some explanation. And then I will switch into the live demo where I would definitely like to show you how you can search, uh, how you can create your search queries in basic and advanced search, how uh, you can use the limiters, uh, how you can work with a uh, full text of the article to interact with articles, uh, if there is time or space for ebooks, I, I will also mention ebooks, um, but uh, not sorry, but uh, then uh, definitely browsing publications. And by the end of the session, I will also say a few words about mobile app because in summer we have released a new mobile app and all the content that I will be introducing today. You can also browse it uh, in, in, this, in your mobile devices in the mobile app. So uh, this is just for the beginning. Uh, so first of all, uh, I will be talking about uh, access to electronic resources. Uh, that's what I mentioned, EBSCO Discovery Service. Uh, we use an abbreviation EDS. EDS is single search box, single access to all electronic resources that your library has access to. So it makes it very easily for, uh, for end users and for students to access the whole library content regarding to electronic resources from one place. Uh, they can, or you can, of course, browse all the content, um, uh, including articles, um, uh, trade publications, conference materials, also eBooks, biographies, all can be accessed from uh, via this search, uh, search box. Uh, about the access, actually, in the previous session, we had um, maybe a little bit of mis misunderstanding. I have, uh, I, I thought the access is uh, from um, this library web page which still is definitely, but I have been thought that, told that soon there will be access right away from a university, Sar university of Sarajevo uh, web page from the landing page. So I think you will be, you will be informed about that. Uh, and then, then the access should be, should be more easier from, from the main landing page of your university. Uh, the access I can recommend you right now is from this uh, Faculty of Philosophy. Uh, on, this, uh, on this link, you can, you can visit this web page. Uh, it looks like this. And on the right-hand corner, there is this EBSCO Discovery Service. So basically, this is, uh, this is, the, 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 this is the access. Uh, this is the access basically when you are physically in the institution because it's based on IP addresses, IP addresses range. Uh, so when you are accessing uh, on site, then you can, from this web page, you can just uh, access EBSCO Discovery Service, uh, use this search box and get right away into this, uh, into the whole content of EDS, of the whole database. If you would like to access remotely, to work remotely from home or anywhere else, uh, after accessing this uh, search box, there will appear this, sorry, <laughs> there will appear this uh, single, uh, this pop-up window asking for credentials. And you need, in that case, you need to use uh, the credentials. Uh, user ID is EDSSA. And the password is Sarajevo 2019 exclamation uh, mark. So uh, this is this is the access for uh, remote remote usage. And after that, you will get right away directly to this uh, to this search box to this EDS. So this is the access uh, for now. And later, you should have uh, you should have it easier from from uh, from university. Um, web page. 
Uh, regarding to source type, uh, well, in this, uh, in this database, in this EDS, we can search all the content, as I mentioned, not only EBSCO content, but also other providers uh, from other, uh, pro not only providers, but um, publishers, uh, publishers content, publishers databases all together. Uh, so just for your information, uh, what is indexed inside this EDS, there is more than 73 million articles that are peer-reviewed and full text. Um, also uh, conference materials, more than 1,700,000 million, 1, 700, million uh, um, conference materials, uh, reviews. Uh, magazines, trade publications. But beside that, you can also find that are there other document types like um, biographies, dissertation and thesis, patents, primary source documents. All this is covered in, in, the, in one database of EDS. Uh, regarding to subjects, um, well, it's multidisciplinary. From what I had checked, uh, the, the subject is really multidisciplinary. This is just an overview of some uh, main subjects that we can find in the database. So uh, I believe each of you will find uh, the reliable content, the content that you are searching for. So uh, we can find their uh, business information, accounting, uh, finance, uh, geology, uh, physics, uh, zoology, and many, many more. So uh, the, the, the content of subject is really wide. Um, I also had a look at the, uh, at the um, publishers that are indexed within the EDS. So, uh, and there is also a limiter for a publisher. Maybe this one might be interesting for you or important. So, Within this EDS, within this one EBSCO, host, uh, EBSCO Discovery Service, we can find um, uh, commercial publishers, top commercial publishers, including uh, Degruiter, uh, Sage, Taylor & Francis, uh, Wiley, Springer Nature, Elsevier. So those very well-known uh, publishers are indexed in, in, in the EDS and also not only a commercial, but also university press publishers including uh, Oxford, uh, Harvard, Edinburgh, uh, Cambridge University Press, MIT, and many, many more. Uh, beside that, you also have, uh, or one of the, let's say, one of the providers of the databases is a Web of Science and Scopus. So we can get the citation uh, indexes from Web of Science and Scopus. And uh, my last slides are going to some examples of covers. So uh, this might be really important information for you that you have access to full text uh, journal science <clears throat> backwards in, in the archive. So uh, journal complete uh, issues are available in full text for you. Later, I will show you how you can browse a specific uh, specific journal if you'd like to. So one of these uh, full text uh, peer reviewed academic top academic journals, and beside that, um, some uh, some journal magazines also in full text. So you have access to Bloomberg Business Week, Forbes, Fortune, Harvard Business Review, and. Uh, following by others, so Time Magazine, also available in full text. Uh, New Republic, one of uh, very, uh, very famous, or people like it, uh, like it reading a lot I, from, from what I know from my experience. New Scientist, Scientific American. So all these are available for you in EDS and also some, uh, some relaxing time, some leisure time. So if you would like to uh, not only keep studying and uh, preparing your uh, lectures and, and work, and you would like to relax a little bit, uh, then in EDS, you can also find some, uh, some content for your uh, leisure time. So Sports Illustrated, for example. Uh, uh, some some magazines for uh, for housekeeping people, Rolling Stones, and so on. So this is just an example of some content, interesting content. And uh, now I will switch in into live demonstration to show you 
how to work with EDS. If there is anything you would like to ask so far, please feel free. And I will stop sharing my screen for a second. I need to switch check the chat box. Uh, no, nothing in the chat box. Okay, uh, so I will continue. Um, how, I hope you can, you can, I'm sharing my, uh, my web browser right now. So this is basically uh, the pop-up window with asking for credentials that I mentioned when you are accessing remotely, which is my case at this moment. So it's ADSSA and the password is Sarajevo 2019 exclamation mark. So this is uh, how you will be signing in remotely. And... I just click on sign in and this is uh, this is it. This is the EDS. This is the whole content of your library electronic resources at one point. Uh, so this is the main page starting on basic search. Uh, then I will also explain or say a few words about advanced search. Uh, and on the top toolbar, uh, there is a button start for a new search. Whenever you would like to start a new search, you can use this one. And I will also mention publications. This is the place where we can browse all the publications. And on the right-hand side, I will mention uh, this folder uh, that, is, uh, that is important also uh, for uh, keeping, keeping uh, articles or records, items for later reference. And also, if we have time, I will show you how you can set up alerts or notifications where this folder is also important. So, uh, and down here, you can uh, find other uh, interesting, uh, interesting or important, let's say, important and quick links uh, to your university. So, this is, the, this is the search box. This is the one entry point. Um, you can start with, uh, well, by default, it's keyword, but you can start searching by title or by author. Uh, we will start with a very broad, uh, broad topic, which is uh, which is uh, sociology. I'd like to to get some uh, results about sociology, and then we will use the limiters uh, to narrow my searches. So uh, I start typing sociology, and as you can see, this is the suggestion box. Uh, this always appear uh, appears divided into. <coughs> into two, uh, two parts. One is popular terms and the other is publications. Uh, these are like most, um, most used uh, keywords or most popular by other people. So you can always select what kind of sociology, for example, socioeconomics or socioculture tell theory uh, you are searching for, or you can select from the publications that are uh, containing the, the keyword sociology. And then you can browse uh, publications directly. But that's not the case. I would like to conduct the search with uh, keyword sociology. And here is my uh, result list. Uh, my result list contains at this moment more than one million and a half results, quite a large number. Uh, in the middle of the page, uh, in this column, there are results. And on the left-hand side, uh, we have the limiters. I will uh, introduce all the limiters uh, one by one. Uh, but first, let me tell you about, maybe this might be interesting for uh, librarians, those of you who are librarians. Uh, maybe you would like to learn about the relevancy because the, the results here are sorted by relevance. Relevancy meaning that the most relevant uh, item appears on the top. Uh, this can be always changed if you would like to, you can have sorted the results sorted by newest or oldest, but by default, it's uh, defaultly, it's by relevancy. And um, each record, each item, you can see there are subjects here, following by this one, subjects. Uh, these subjects are provided uh, by our indexers. So basically each item in a database is uh, has been reviewed by, by indexers and has been um, uh, given some, some subjects, let's say keywords. So uh, political science, for example, sociology, social te theory, and so on. And once you conduct the search, 
uh, with the keyword sociology. The system in the background is going through different fields to be able to give you the most relevant content on the top. And the very first field is the subject. So this is the most, this is the way how the system gives you the most relevant items. So basically for you, it's important that your keywords appear in the subject. Sometimes it might not appear in the title, but it doesn't mean that the content is not relevant. Uh, it's important that it appears in the subject field. So the system goes by uh, subjects field, then by uh, author's keyword, abstract, um, uh, author's keyword, abstract, what's next? Um, description of the full text, if I'm not mistaken, and the other, and the other fields. They are five. So this is, uh, this is the way how the system gives you the most relevancy. And usually in the middle of the page, there are video videos. So uh, the EDS contains also the video collection. Uh, in the middle of the page, there appear three of them, but you can click on view all results. And here you can browse all the videos uh, coming from Associated Press, AP Agency, and Business and Economics video collection. You can use the limiters here on the left-hand side, or you can start browsing completely new search regarding to videos. And then if you need it, for example, for your lectures or for, for your classes to show to students some videos, you can, uh, you can find them here. So this is the video collection included in EDS. And what else? Uh, this is more likely information for students, not for, uh, for uh, librarians and, and uh, professors, but just for you to know, this is what we call a research starter. This is very important entry point for, for students when they start the, their search, their research, uh, because basically uh, here is an overview of uh, the topic coming from um, uh, encyclopedias. So instead of searching in uh, Google, for example, of the, for the definition of sociology, they can search for a definition from this academic encyclopedias, usually Encyclopedia Brit Britannica or Salem Press Encyclopedia. So when I click on, uh, on this research starter, then if I scroll down, I have an, just a, introduction of sociology, but then it's divided into different um, sociology uh, topics. So I can select social anthropology, for example. And here is an overview coming from Salem Press Encyclopedia. And I can see an overview. I can read about the application, society, and all, all together. So this is very important starting point, uh, the definition uh, where students can start searching. And okay, so these are these are the results. And let me now introduce the uh, the limiters on the left hand side because uh, nobody is going to. Uh, read or go through one million and a half results, right? <laughs> so uh, this is uh, this is important to use the limiters. Uh, if I scroll a little bit further, then uh, by default there is this limiter full text. It means I think this one is set up as a default, so you don't need to use it. Basically, it means that my result list contains only full text. So if I have disabled this one or uh, <clears throat> remove this full text, then I would get, will get even larger number of results. So it's better that it's kept uh, as a default. So you can be sure that your results are containing full text, any access to the full text. And <clears throat> another one is peer reviewed. Uh, this limiter you can use to get results that, uh, that has uh, that, that came through some uh, that came through a peer reviewed um, process when admitting by by the journal. So, uh, well, let's say this this limiter is giving us a higher quality content because uh, we can be sure that it's peer reviewed content. 
uh, following by publication date. Uh, so this, uh, this, uh, this is the limiter where we can select uh, for the content that has been published either recently or if you are searching for some archived content, you can easily just grab this and move it on the line, both sides, or you can type the year directly into this box. So I'd like to see 2010 to 2022, some, let's say, 10 years old content. And so I use this publication date. Uh, and then all these, all these others are working with the same logic. Uh, basically, the logic is that usually five or six of them with the hit with the highest number of counts is appearing, but you can always click on show more to see uh, to see more of the content. So the first one is source type. If I click on show more, I will get um, I will get uh, the overview of source type uh, that are indexed within my result list. So I see there is over five six hundred uh, thousand. Uh, articles, this academic journal content mean, means articles, but I can select if I'm interested just in conference materials or only in biographies regarding to sociology, I can select only these 43 uh, biographies, for example, and so on. So I will just select articles and conference materials and update. Um, so another limiter is subject, and uh, in my opinion, that's what I usually say with in my in my trainings. This is one of the most important limiters because basically this subject is related to this subject that I have mentioned at the beginning. So the subject <laughs> the subject field that is indexing each item, and basically in this subject limiter. Let me open it. Uh, there appears up to 50 subjects <clears throat> with hit it, uh, with highest number of counts counts uh, that we here we can narrow the searches uh, in what specifically within the, uh, the sociology we are searching for. Uh, they are sorted by hit counts. For me, when I'm doing some when I'm searching for some information, I, I prefer to have them sorted by alphabet. So if you would like to do that, you will just click the name and they will be sorted by alphabet in the alphabetical order. And basically here you can select what specifically within uh, sociology you, you would like to have displayed, social networks, social history, social sciences, social norms, you see, for social norms, there is more than 5,000 results. So you can basically select each of these and, um, and update. So this is one of the very important limiters. Um, then there is a publication. So again, I see that the highest number of results is uh, from plus one, following by other journals. Uh, regarding to sociology. But this is uh, important in case that you we would like, for example, to see uh, the content of, um, of journals that are uh, publishing the, the topic that you are interested in. So you can filter basically for uh, a specific publication. The same lo logic goes for publisher. So I see the highest number is for, from Taylor and Francis, following by, by, following by Wiley uh, and so on. So if you would like to see just a specific, uh, specific uh, uh, for example, MIT, uh, just the results from MIT publishers, you can, you can use it here and click on update. Uh, another, uh, another filter is language, of course, uh, majority of the content is written in English, but we can find also many, many other languages uh, that are indexed with, within this EDS. So this is the limiter for languages, uh, limiter for geography. 
uh, here I need to mention that the geography limiter is um, dedicated to the place of the, the publication, not to the place what the article is writing about or publishing about. So uh, within this United States, for example, we will get um, results of all articles that has been published in the United States. So this is the geography. And the last one, content provider, very important one. I will click on show more to show you all of them. So basically here we can find all the providers, not only EBSCO, but also other providers that are included. And if you are interested in some specific provider, you can, uh, for example, you know that the database, uh, you would like to search only within that database, that specific one, you can limit, uh, you can limit here in this content provider uh, limiter. <clears throat> Okay, everything, uh, everything is clear. Any questions on that so far? All right, I'm checking the chat box. There is nothing, so I will continue. <clears throat> uh, I will continue. I will, I will mention briefly uh, this um this folder um this is uh if you if you would like to sign in uh so this is basically your personal space in this eds uh, because when you are browsing uh the content the results you can by clicking this icon uh you can store anything into your folder let's say it's kind of storage uh but if you will not sign in into your folder uh, and you will stop working with uh, this database with EDS, either clicking this X or you will not touch any button of your uh, keyboard, key, keyboard for 30 minutes, then you will be locked out and everything that you have stored uh, in your folder will disappear. It will be removed. This is for security reasons. And to avoid that, you can create your own personal folder and basically whatever you will store there in, in your folder for later reference, you will always find it there until you remove it from your folder. So if you don't have your folder yet, I click you will I will I will definitely recommend you to click on sign in. And if you don't have an account, sorry, I clicked something wrong. Uh, if you don't have an account, you will just click this sign in button, sign up button. And this has nothing to do with the credentials uh, to log into EDS remotely, that ED, 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 ES, the, those credentials are different. Here, you need to create your own one. Uh, you just need to fill in your name your email address that can be also uh, um, your private so either gmail anything else depending on your needs and you will you will create strong password and once you create your your account i already have mine so i will sign in once you create your account um, you can you can use the benefits of that and let me just show you. All right. This is my, now, now I'm signed in. You see the folder is open and it has recognized me by my name, Carolina. So, uh, so I'm assigned in. And basically when I'm browsing this content of the results, uh, whatever I see interesting and I would like to keep it for later reference, I can use this icon here. And move the article or any other content. And let's say this one, for example, I will move it to my folder. And if I come back to EDS in two weeks or in one month, I will log into my personal folder. I will find this. I will find all the articles, all the articles there. So uh, here, this is my folder. This is, this is how my folder looks like. And in the menu of these articles, I can see 18 articles. So I see also those articles that I have stored in my previous times, in my previous session. And 
uh, I will always find it here. So this is the way, let me go back. This is the way how you can, um, how you can actually uh, put anything for later reference. And once we are signed into the folder, I can also show you how you can set up alerts. You can set up the notifications. Um, we are distinguish here in, in this EDS, we have two types of, fold, uh, of notifications. Uh, one of them is search alert and the other is publication alert. Publication alert, I will show you by the end when I will be talking about the publications. But a search alert, you can set up basically a search alert. Let's say, let's say that I have used at advanced search, I have more sophisticated search query, I have applied more limiters, and I basically uh, created the search query that I'm interested in this topic. And I would like to be notified whenever new content will be added to EDS based on my search query. Uh, how, how can you do that? You need to be signed into your folder, your personal one. You will conduct the search. You will set up uh, all the limiters you want, all the specifications you are interested in. And once you have, you have done that, once you are on the result list, you will just use this share button. And here you will select email alert. Uh, from here, you can see your search alert. That is the content full text, peer reviewed publication date, and uh, my, my search, uh, ser ser search. Well, this is the conclusion, uh, the, the overview of all my search query. And I will just fill in my email address. I can decide about the frequency of sending and other, some other settings, and then I will click on a save alert. I will cancel right now. So uh, after that, I will be notified by email whenever new content based on my search query will be added to the database. So I don't have to go and search every other time uh, about, about my content I'm interested in. Uh, so this is basically uh, this is basically how you can use your folder. And once we are once we have this uh, result list uh, sorted by relevancy, uh, let's say when I'm going through the results, I would like to decide which articles are important, or not only art articles, all the content, reviews, newspapers, uh, ebooks. What, I'm, what, what is specifically uh, specific to me, what I'm interested in. Um, you, can, you can actually from one record from the result list, you see the bibliographic data. So you see the article, the pagination uh, issue and so on. Then we can see just one sentence, maybe two sentence of the abstract, but no more. And then we see the subjects, the description. And after that, the full text. So if you would like to learn more about this uh, record and you don't want to click inside and outside back to the result list again, you can use this uh, magnifying glass icon. I just hover my mouse over there and this pop-up window appears showing me uh, more information from the abstract. So here you can see all the bibliographic data and the beginning, at least the beginning of the abstract. So you can read it right away from the result list to learn more about this specific article, what it's about. Uh, another way how you can basically conduct the search is when you find, for example, this article that is interesting, you can click inside into the detail and this is the detail record of this uh, article. Of course, I can read the whole abstract from here. The whole abstract is, is appearing. But what I would like to mention, as you can see, there are hyperlinks, those blue ones, for authors, source, subject terms, and author-supplied keywords. 
Also for the business, for some business databases, there is this NISCS industry codes. This is a classification for business databases. And basically this can be helpful because I know that this article has been described by the subject terms of urban planning, historical sociology, urban sociology, uh, and so on. And from here, I can even click on, for example, historical sociology. And I, I conduct my search deeper because I'm interested in this subject term, historical sociology. And here is my result of 2,250 uh, articles or, or all the content. Here I have some ebooks. Uh, some journals, some articles, and so on. So basically, all that are hyperlinked can help you to get more and more deeper in your topics. Uh, the same, it works for author supplied keywords <clears throat> and uh, for the author as well. Uh, what I'd like to mention that authors uh if there is available uh the the email address for the author within the article if it's available we always uh display it here so you can you have the contact contact for the author and also the affiliation uh you see there is one and two and if i scroll down there is author affiliation here so i know from which university uh this this lady uh, is uh, working at. So uh, this more detailed information in the detail record. And let me go back to the result list. Now I'd like to tell you how basically we can access the full text because this is very important. Uh, of course, you are browsing the, the electronic resources and you would like to access the full text, right? That's the most important thing to read the articles. So basically there will be two options or maybe a maybe few more, but uh, let me explain you. As I mentioned, um, there is not only EBSCO content, but also content from other providers. If it is EBSCO, uh, then you will find this icon of PDF full text. <clears throat> so uh, basically, whenever you find PDF full text, you know that this is EBSCO content, and I will show you how you can work further with these articles. Uh, in case that it is not um, EBSCO, uh, EBSCO content, you will find this full text finder. It means that the content is coming from outside public, um, provider, but still you can be sure that you get into the full text, but you will get into it outside of EBSCO. So you will use this full text finder icon. And now the new pop-up window is appearing. If it doesn't open automatically, then click this open a page in a new window. And basically now I got into the publisher website where the, um, uh, the PDF will be uh, available in any case, but I'm not searching in EDS anymore. I'm, I'm getting outside. But basically this EDS is uh, allowing you to get to the access uh, to, to access to uh, uh, electronic resources PDF outside of EBSCO. So you can you can be sure that if I click on that, here are the articles in PDF. So basically, you can be sure that you get into the full text anyway. But this one is, for example, coming from other databases. These are coming from ED, uh, from EBSCO. And then you can see something like full text from Eric. So again, you will need to click and get outside of EBSCO. Uh, so within those PDF full text that are included in EBSCO or they are uh, EBSCO content, I can show you how you can work further with the, uh, with the article. So this is the article displayed for me. Um, what I can do um, on the left hand side, there are some more information. Uh, there is information about the source. So I see this is, has been published in a forum, Quantitative Social Research, and it has been published in September 1st, uh, 2021. And in this area below, 
I can browse uh, all other articles published within this issue 2000, uh, September 1st, 2021. So this might be also interesting for you because basically here you can browse all issue uh, of the same uh, of, of this uh, of this publication date. And down here you can select choose another issue. So basically you can browse the whole uh, the whole journal, uh, this one. And uh, regarding to the article on the right hand side and on the top toolbar, there are some other options to work with. So just uh, not only read the article, which might be and will be essential thing, and it's the most important. Of course, you can download it. There is no any protection. Uh, all the content that you find from EBSCO within this PDF, you can just click this icon and download it locally into your computer. And you can keep it for, for your reference. So downloading, and then on the left hand, right hand side, another options. Uh, this is the Google. If you if you are using Gmail, uh, you have your Google Drive. Uh, after clicking this icon, you will be prompted to log into your Gmail, and you can download this article uh, to your Google Drive. So virtually into into uh, cloud. Not, not only locally into your computer, but also virtually. Uh, then there is this icon of printing, following by email. So if you find some article interesting and you would like to share with a colleague, for example, colleague of your, you will fill in uh, their email addresses, put the subject, write some comment. You can decide if the PDF should be a separate or uh, as an attachment, and you can select uh, also the citation and send. So after that, your colleagues will receive this article as an attachment in email. Uh, down here, following by, well, this is more important for students, but uh, I also mentioned that if uh, for the librarians, if, if they will be, for example, working with students, uh, I don't know what type of uh, citation format uh, is uh, used in the, your university. In each institution, it's different source type using so usage. So uh, here you can find uh, nine predefined citation formats including Vancouver, Harvard, Chicago. And the student can, when they are working on their papers and they, they would like to cite this article, they will just copy and paste uh, the citation. So this is the citation icon, following by export. From here, you can export bibliographic data in different, uh, uh, different programs. Um, what is a setup as a default is RIS format, and this one is uh, for uh, suitable for citation managers. So if your students are using any citation format, uh, citation um, managers, uh, Zotero, EndNote, Mendeley, they use it for classification of uh, their thesis, for example, or um, uh, this this functionality they can uh, they can or you can download this export metadata or bibliographic data and upload it into the citation manager. And the last one, this icon uh, is a permalink. Uh, this I would like to mention especially for professors because this is a very easy way how to share the content with uh, students. This is usually being used um, uh, when uh, you would like you find some article you would like to share with the students you want them to read the article for example and if you if well you can share it with the uh, students on email or any e-learning platform like um, Moodle for example so in that case please do not use the link from uh, from browser because this will be this will become invalid once I finish working with EDS, but always use this permalink. And if you copy it and paste it, uh, send it to your students. Once they click on the link, 
uh, they will be prompt to, if they are not uh, physically in the institution, if they are working remotely, they will need to log into EDS and then they will get directly into this article. So uh, very easily access or sharing this article with other people. Uh, any question on that before I move on? Okay, seems there are no questions. So I, you saw that I clicked on this advanced search. Uh, here I would like to show you how you can basically create more sophisticated search queries. Uh, that's why advanced search <laughs> is named of. So here we can work with more combining more keywords uh, using some limiters, some expanders and so on. So let me clear this. And uh, this is how advanced search looks like. Uh, you see search three search boxes. Uh, you can always add more by clicking this plus and minus up to nine search boxes that can be combined together. Uh, and those search boxes, or let's say the keywords can be combined with Boolean operators and or not. So it gives you an opportunity to combine with different, uh, different logic. And also you can select from different fields. This all is not available in basic search, only in advanced search. So if you are searching for a specific author, for example, you can select the author field here. And what I will do, I will, I'd like to see some content about uh, lifelong uh, learning in in digital digital age so what i can do i can just type lifelong learning i select it from here and i will combine with digital age and i see the system is offering me digital age or digital world or digital environment or 23rd century of social media or internet or online. Basically, it's good to use as many synonyms as possible because the more synonyms you have, uh, the more broader uh, results you will get. So for me, me, for example, I just like to use digital age or digital world. Okay, I keep it like this and I conduct the search. Um, I received 15,000 results, but I can give you a trick. Uh, I can tell you a trick. Uh, you can select from the fields. Uh, you can select this subject terms. In that case, the system will be searching for lifelong learning, not in all five fields, as I mentioned, subject, title, author's keywords, but only in subject fields. So by this, I'm narrowing my searches, my results. You see now there is 90 only. So this is the way how you can narrow the searches uh, definitely by using this subject term field. Uh, going back to advanced search, I'd like maybe to mention that here you have search modes and expanders, expanders are here. Uh, basically in search terms, uh, whatever different of these you will select, you will always get different number of results because the system will be searching in different logic. And uh, here in expanders, you can select apply related worlds in case sometimes when you get only little number of results, you can use this expander. And this expander also search within the full text of the article. Uh, this is give us uh, an opportunity to also get much larger of results because my keyword will be searched in uh, also in full text, not, in, not only in those five fields that I have mentioned previously. Uh, and then you can set up some other limiters before conducting the search. Maybe I will mention this date published because in the result list, in the limiters, you saw only the publication year. But here in advanced search, you can even select the month 
So this gives us a, this gives an opportunity to select only for uh, articles related um, to some topic that has been published since June uh, since June this year, for example. So this uh, this this gives you more opportunity to narrow your searches. Um, all right, and the last part I would like to mention is how you can browse the publications. So uh, this uh, one, one way is to use the keyword searches, but if you would like to see, for example, which publications does the, your library have regarding to some topic, or you are searching for a specific, I mentioned science, science journal, uh, science uh, journal I have mentioned in my PowerPoint. So you would like to browse, for example, science uh, journal. You can do that here in publications. Uh, if I click on that, on the top toolbar, this is how my searching, searching library publications looks like. So there is one search box where I can either uh, type the title or subject, ISSN or ISBN, or I can browse by discipline. So all the content, library content is divided here regarding to our journals and eBooks, uh, is divided here by uh, disciplines. So I mentioned the sociology before, I click on the sociology and I see there is 803 publications altogether that are related for uh, sociology. On the right left hand side, I can again use the limiters so I can select only peer reviewed journals if I'd like to. So there is 470 peer reviewed journals and I can have a look at them. Uh, I can use the subject and the publisher limiter. So again, uh, within the sociology, I would like to uh, like uh, see the um, the journals that I relate that are related to social services, for example. And here I can see, I can get the overview. So you can browse by disciplines or what you can do, as I mentioned, was the science uh, journal. You can search for a specific, uh, specific journal. So I just, Type, I start typing and my suggestion box is again displaying, is displaying um, uh, all the publications that has included this science uh, word inside. So I see Scientific American, uh, Scientific Reports and Social Science Quarterly, for example. So here in suggestion box, I can select I'm searching basically for science journal. So I select this one. And okay, I get, sorry, I was having this uh, limiters. So I don't want to keep search limiters. Let's start again. I have applied the limiters on the on the right hand side, left hand side before. So here is the science uh, journal. And uh, what I can find, the, uh, I can have a look at the full text of, uh, if I would like to browse all the issues and articles from science in full text, I will just click this full text access. And here I have the information from which databases I have access to full text. So either it is from Academic Search Ultimate from 1990 until today, or it was from JSTOR from 1880 even to 1922. So depending in which year I'm interested in, I can click on the database, uh, then a new pop-up window will appear. And now I got into publication details for science, including all the information here, uh, regard, uh, including the publisher's URL, uh, frequency of publication, if it's peer reviewed or if it's not, and all the details here. And on the right hand side, I can browse all issues and articles. Uh, the science journal is with no embargo for you. So I can directly see all the articles from uh, issue November 20 
uh, 21, volume 374. And if I click on that, here is the 15, uh, 50 articles that has been published uh, in science in, 19, uh, in November. Okay, and let me go back uh, to, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, result list of uh, publications. What you can do is um, browse a specific keyword within the publications directly from here. So I'd like to learn about global, uh, to, to get the results that are containing global warming, for example, in science journal. So I just put global warming or type global warming here in science and I conduct the search. And I get more than 6,000 results where global warming subject or keyword is appearing in, uh, where it is, science, science art, uh, science journal. So uh, you can combine these and then, of course, you can use the limiters on the left hand side again to subject to more specifically narrow for subject, for example, for climate change, greenhouse effects and many, many more. So this is another way how you can basically uh, browse. Uh, I know I'm, I'm exceeding the time. I'm running out of time. So sorry. Give me five more minutes, please. No longer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, if you would like to need any help uh, anytime you are searching in EDS, you can use this help button on the right hand side. Uh, here you can see, uh, for example, when I mentioned uh, Boolean operators in advanced search. So here you will browse the menu. Uh, I don't know, down here there are Boolean, Boolean operators somewhere. Uh, search say uh, search queries using folder, uh, seeing PDF citations, everything that I have just uh, randomly, not randomly, but just uh, briefly introduced today. You can find all the help here. And last, what I'd like to show you is, and this might be also good information for um, librarians. If you, if maybe your students are asking about uh, using uh, using mobile app, because uh, as I mentioned, we have released this new EBSCO mobile app in summer. So all the content of your EDS, uh, all everything that I have searched today right now, it can be searchable in the mobile app. Uh, this mobile app can be downloaded in App Store or. Google Play, just type EBSCO and that's all. And you will find this logo in a blue, blue, um, this blue logo with a white uh, EBSCO uh, title. And once you download it, why do I mention that? Because uh, I just need to, to explain you how you can log in to this uh, mobile app. After that, using this mobile app, it's very intuitive and easy. Uh, so once you download this mobile app, can be downloaded into your mobile phone or uh, iPad, whatever mobile device, uh, you will open it and you find this get started button. And when you click on that, you need to, uh, you need to connect your institution this needs to be uh, done once in 30 days. So this, uh, this signing in, you will be prompt to do that only once in once in month, one in 30, day, 30 days. Uh, so here in this uh, search by in this search box, you need to type your institution name. And once you do that, the this list will a list of institutions will appear. So in a find your institution, it's important you to type Uni, UNIF of Sarajevo Rectorate. This is exactly name or title of your institution that needs to be typed in this find your institution search box. Uh, then you will find your institution here in uh, the list and you will just click on connect and after that, uh, the credentials are exactly the same as, as uh, when you are logging into uh, EDS remotely on your computers. So basically, this is 
Uh, this is uh, the sign-in user ID and password uh, sign-in window, and you will use the same credentials. And after that, this is how uh, this is how uh, it looks like. I will not go into any details because it's very easy, intuitive, and I can say you can you can read the articles in PDF right away from the from the mobile app as well. So uh, sorry, I was exceeding. I was running out of time, <laughs> but that's all I wanted. Uh, I wanted to cover uh, today, and I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'll be stopping the recording now, and please feel free to ask me anything you would like to. Now it's your time. <laughs>